Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Zlin Shock Ultra Extremely, Extremely, Extremely Short Takeoff and Landing Airplane. If you're curious though, we're, we're currently present, we are here in the Kamchatka Peninsula. This is basically as far away from anywhere as you can. We're at Mokovo Airport, it's a uniform hotel Papa Mike. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, this aircraft is a little different than some of the other aircraft that you've probably flown before in that it is a tail dragger aircraft, but uh, most importantly, there is basically no instrumentation anywhere to be seen anywhere with this particular airplane. I actually think that's not a bad thing, you know, where you can really concentrate on VFR flying. Of course, you look at another window going, um, I don't think you should be VFR flying in this. It's all right, I, I can find a river or something, it'll be fine. All right, so getting this thing started is like, remarkably simple. Again, this is a little Rotax-powered aircraft. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure the throttle is pulled all the way back, just like we have here. We're going to make sure the choke is pulled out, especially in a nice cold day like this. Uh, coming over this way, uh, there's a couple different little plates. We want to make sure the fuel pump is turned on. We also want to go double check to make sure our strobe light is turned on. And we also have things uh, that we can use as well. <laughs> like we have a USB stick if we need it. We also have the ability, of course, to turn on a radio. But uh, <laughs> as you can see, we're not going to worry about that just yet. So basically, to get this thing rolling, we're going to go over to our master switch. We're going to go ahead and pop that sucker on. It's going to give us a bit of an angry little message to basically say, hey, uh, what's going on here? Over on this side, we have uh, two magneto switches. We're going to go ahead and select both of those to the on position. And you can see that we've got ourselves 28 gallons of fuel. And if you want to check that visually, you can actually see the little pipe where the fuel is going to be rolling through. And this, of course, would be the little pipe that we use to actually make a control. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and get this thing started. Now, like I said, very, very straightforward experience. All we're going to do is come over to this big old key right here, just crank and let go. That's it. <laughs> There's not really a lot to this aircraft as far as I uh, get this thing started. The POH does indicate you're supposed to pull the stick all the way back uh, during your initial startup so that you don't accidentally make this thing do a face plant if it uh, tends to generate too much thrust. So looking at it now, you can see we're just sitting here nice and uh, gently warming up. Uh, nobody would be able to see us ever inside of this particular uh, environment, but I'm not worried about it too much. So we're going to make sure we have oil pressure, which we do. I'm just taking a look real quickly. Pressure is in the green. Our oil temperature is a little cold at this point time, especially given the fact that we just started this. Our cylinder head temperatures are warm up pretty darn quick here. I'm going to go ahead and release the choke in the real aircraft. Uh, if the choke was not working properly, other issues would come up. But as you can see, it barely had any impact at all. Give us just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of uh, throttle here to go ahead and get this thing kind of warming up. Again, we want to try to keep this in the green whenever we're doing anything. But as long as the oil pressure is okay, I wouldn't worry about it too, too much. Okay, with that all set, we're going to go ahead and get this thing ready to rock. So I'm going to flip on my avionics switch, which consists of a single radio. That's it. That's all we get. So I'm going to look around and make sure everything is kind of clear around me. Again, this hopefully this weather gets a little bit nicer on our way up towards the other airport. So it looks pretty good. Taxiing this aircraft is a pretty much the same as a taxiing any sort of tail dragger. What you want to do is you want to take the stick and pull it all the way back towards you. Go ahead and gently release the brakes. And then you're going to give it just enough thrust to kind of get it rolling. You don't want to go ripping on this thing because this is an extraordinarily light aircraft. This is much more glider than it is airplane, trust me. I push that throttle all the way around, kind of do a nice little donut in place. There's not many aircraft that can turn that tightly, but hey, I like this one. We're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of thrust. And again, I'm pulling the yoke or the stick all the way back. Try not to rev too hard. Again, the faster we go and the more aggressive we are with the controls, the more like we are going to be to spin this thing. So the reason we chose, of course, the Kamchatka Peninsula here is because uh, we have these uh, lovely Tundra tires. It would be great to go ahead and give them a try uh, once we get over to the runway. But I can see that the uh, runway patrol has done a wonderful, wonderful job of uh, kind of cleaning this up. So it's actually not nearly as bad shape as it could be, given uh, what's going on. All right, here's our little turning spot here. One thing I do recommend is on the keyboard, uh, you have the space bar. Tap the space bar, and it makes it a little easier to see over the nose here. All right, we're going to go ahead and proceed down to the runway here. Again, not much to this airplane. We'll do our little run-up, which is a very, very simple in this aircraft, which is kind of handy. Just a tiny bit more thrust. That gets us about 11 inches. Uh, we're just about in the green with the oil temperature. I'm gonna, so I don't want to go too, too far in the RFC revs here. It's about 112, and it's looking pretty good. Again, remember, it's uh, minus 20 degrees on the Celsius scale for those of you keeping score. A little tiny bit more. I'm going to go ahead and check the approach. Looks like the approach is... Uh, Looking pretty nasty here. This is going to be uh, certainly an interesting flight, no matter how you look at it. All right. That's about as warm as that oil is going to get. Interesting thing about Rotax engines is uh, they always tend to be tremendously cold or hot on the ground, and they tend to be tremendously cold once you get them up into the air. They are water-cooled engines. I should say liquid. It's not really water. It's antifreeze. So, again, you have to something just a little different, a little different. 
Okay. All right, coming up on a runway 24 here. We're just about going to take off and take our little south heading again. Not too, too long of a flight today, and especially uh, given that the conditions are less than hospitable. Again, we're in a, basically a primordial part of the world here. And like I said, hopefully those weather conditions clear up for us, giving us a chance to go ahead and see things. All right, I'm going to come to a complete stop before I execute my turn. We don't want to accidentally kick the tail out. And I'm looking over the runway, and it is icy. So uh, unfortunately for us, this is going to make things a little bit more sketchy than usually they are. All right, position us. Good. Okay, so taking a look, uh, normal language, uh, landing at maximum takeoff weight doesn't affect us, but climb does. You're supposed to use one notch of flaps. You do not need to use a notch of flaps in this aircraft if you don't want to. I'm just doing. If you want maximum short takeoff, of course, you can slap the flaps all the way down like that. It is completely up to you for what you're trying to achieve. I'm going to go ahead and do a normal takeoff by putting the flaps into that position, which is going to work pretty well for us. Takeoff is going to be at full throttle, and once we get climbing, we want to reduce our power to less than 5,500 RPM. We're looking for about 110, about 100, 110. 10 kilometers per hour for our climb speed. All right, let's do it. Smoothly apply, apply full throttle. Going to start accelerating, push it all the way forward. Tail's going to lift up, and we are airborne. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? All right, we're going to let it sit at a uh, climb for just a moment here. We're going to raise up the notch of flaps. We're going to let the nose drop just a teeny tiny bit, and man, that's that snow's looking pretty darn sketchy. I mean, I can barely see out the front there. That's about 110. I'm going to go ahead and lift the nose up a little bit. I'm going to reduce my throttle. You have to get less than 5,500 RPM. Oh boy, this is probably not the safest situation. Uh, maybe we should come around again. Whoosh. Ah, look at that. We just passed right out of that bad snow squall there. And now we can see the entire Kamchatka Peninsula just sitting here like ourselves. Now this, like I said, is a primordial part of Earth. Very, very few people live here. There's a tremendous, tremendous amount of just empty land made up of nothing but pine trees. This is the taiga. This is the tundra, exactly as you could probably imagine. All right, we're going to reduce power just a teeny tiny bit. Like I said, we're trying to keep it right around 5,500 or less during climb. We don't want to overheat anything. We can go past 5,500, but we have a two-minute limit on that. All right, go ahead and zero ourselves out here, and we're going to start making our way down along this basically gigantic, gigantic, gigantic uh, forest here. All right, we're going to get up to about 2,500 feet. Seems to be pretty good. Like I said, your best climb speed is going to be right around 110 to 120 kilometers per hour. Obviously, I'm going a little quick, but that's all right. I wasn't paying attention. I wanted to stay away from that cloud. All right, hold that nose up just a teeny tiny bit. Make sure flaps are retracted, which they are. And we do not have to deal with any negative flaps in this aircraft, which is nice, unlike some of its competitors that do have that technology on board. All right, that puts us at about a 12-degree climb, which is staggering. So our VY is getting us uh, about 1,200 feet per minute, which is really, really impressive. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, gently roll back and forth. Again, whenever you're climbing with an airplane like this, be cognizant of the fact that we don't know where we're going. <laughs> All right, we'll let the nose come down. And we'll let it settle for a little bit here. The cruising setting on this aircraft is fortunately not terribly complicated, which is all super duper handy here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the throttle all the way back until we get to 5,000 RPM. That is considered the cruising RPM for this particular aircraft. Uh, we can certainly cruise at 5,500, but that's essentially 100% power cruise. Again, just making gentle little adjustments. Remember, as your speed changes, so will your power going to get us about yeah, 5,000 give or take. I'm not going to get too close here because I know that by changing the trim, it's going to come around on me anyway. All right, 4,999, 5,000. I think I'm going to leave it right there. Now, one of the great things about this aircraft is it requires very, very little trim to keep it exactly where you want. I mean, right now, I mean, you're looking at my airspeed indicator. You can see I'm doing 150 kilometers per hour. If you want to think about it another way, that works out to be about 80 knots, which is a, one of the slowest, if not the slowest aircraft in the entire Microsoft Flight Simulator game that comes by default. There are a couple add-on aircrafts that are also very, very slow, but like I said, this is easily the slowest one. Now, if you've ever actually taken a look at this aircraft from behind, you realize that just look at how teeny, teeny, tiny it is. There's absolutely nothing to this airplane. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to kind of make our way down south here uh, towards the airbase. It's a Shiromi Air Base. It's a uniform Yankee Echo Lima. It's a pretty long runway. Not that we're not going to even need it. We're actually going to land on the taxiway just because this aircraft requires basically no room in which to stop. Man, they say there are slow airplanes out there. This one definitely takes the cake. 
I've just been uh, cruising around and I've literally watched the seasons change around me as I've been proceeding here. And again, like I was saying, it's just a wall of green. It always makes me think of things like uh, spin tires or something along those lines. Now, straight off for 12 o'clock, uh, you can probably see this incredibly large hole in the ground here. Uh, that's going to be the airbase we're going to be flying into. It is a mega airbase with 11,457 feet worth of runway. Uh, we require about 250 feet of runway on a bad day. So, uh, like I said, we're going to go ahead and land on it on a pretty much dangerous spot. I noticed, of course, since uh, the weather is uh, stabilized, we've got a bit of a warm front here. We're getting up, bounced around a little bit more with that uh, nasty turbulence. And I also noticed my cruise speed has been affected kind of negatively a little bit. So I'm actually going to push the throttle forward. We do lose a little bit of thrust, of course, because our engine's not going to produce nearly as well in the warmer air. All right, proceeding pretty nicely here. And like I said, we get about 142 kilometers an hour. Isn't too, too bad. Now, you're probably saying there, you know, it looks like that airbase off our nose is not really moving. It doesn't seem like we're getting close to it. That just gives you an idea of how massively large this one is. All right, now it's time to go ahead and start descending downwards. Now, we need to get down to an altitude. Let's see, I'll be the local altitude. The Patrick pattern altitude is 1,800 feet. So we're already at 1,900 feet, so I'm not worried about that too, too much. But normally when you descend this aircraft, uh, usually what I do is reduce it to about 4,400 RPM. Go ahead and do that now, just for demonstration purposes. And I go ahead and let the nose sink down so we get about 500 feet per minute. Seems to be a pretty comfortable descent. Obviously, it's going to depend on, you know, what kind of situation you're in. Pretty much the minimum RPM you're ever going to put this thing at is going to be about 4,000 RPM, which is considered 40% power in case you're curious. I'm going to start a nice gentle descent, and we're at a correct altitude. So I'm going to go ahead and smoothly push the throttle back forward to go ahead and level ourselves back out. Again, we need about uh, 5,000 RPM is kind of our cruise RPM for this particular aircraft. All right, let's get a little bit closer. All right, it's time for our approach. Approaching with this aircraft is a relatively simple. You don't have to worry about shock cooling or anything like that on account of the fact that we are, like I said, water-cooled. I'm going to smoothly pull the throttle back, and we're going to go ahead and line ourselves up at the end of the runway. So with this aircraft, uh, your approach speed is <laughs> incredibly 80 kilometers per hour. is considered kind of the upper edge. And of course, uh, when we land this thing, you're supposed to be doing a three-point landing at all times. If we really, 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 really need to slow down, we can come down to about 50, 60 kilometers per hour. But again, you're basically crawling at that particular point. All right, looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and deploy our first notch of flaps once we get underneath 80 kilometers an hour, which is about right there. Pop that handle. The thing immediately comes up. And once we get to about 70, which is also going to be our approach speed, I'll go ahead and drop that second notch of flaps in. Now, if you look at this aircraft from the outside and look at the side of where the flaps are, look at how far down those aircraft flaps are. That's incredible. All right, let's line ourselves back up with the runway. You know, oh, who's this? Whoop. <laughs> That's a lucky place to have a house. That's where the American spies probably hang out, I'm sure. All right, get ourselves a little bit slow here. We want to stay right around 70 knots. The uh, handbook recommends that you do all landings as three-point landings as opposed to two-point landings. So what a three-point landing is, is you're basically going to line the nose up of the plane so that all three tires touch the ground at the exact same time. Uh, this is one of those things where it's way easier said than done, depending on the scenario. And of course, if you're carrying a lot of extra weight, this aircraft is uh, going to be a little bit trickier to do that with. The alternative, of course, would be a two-point landing, where we're basically going to land flat on the front two tires, and then gently reduce speed and bring our tail down. All right, looking pretty good. I got my nose pretty much centered. Again, uh, it's just a very, wrong, very, very, very long runway. That's why it's so illusionary. Now, one of the neat things about this plane, it's always fun to demonstrate, is I'm going to pull the throttle back real quick. Notice it just slows down, and it just starts to drop. Now, if I push the throttle forward real quick, it instantly has its speed back up. So unlike a lot of aircraft, you can basically power your way out of a stall. It's sort of, not that you can of other aircraft, but this one especially is very, very, very easy to power yourself out of a stall situation. All right, there's our lovely runway. I feel like I need to be a Tupolev 95 or a 142 coming in here, but I'll, I'll deal with this little airplane. Let's see if we got the wind coming from the correct direction here. Hey, we even got the wind coming from the right direction. That never happens, I swear. <laughs> All right, we're a little bit high, so I'm gonna reduce the throttle just a tiny bit. Give myself a little bit of a slip here. And we're just aiming for the big old number 22 there. I'm going to go ahead and bring my nose to the right. Just throttle a little bit more. Kind of come swinging down here. Like I said, a gentle little slip. Lose all that altitude. All right, bring that throttle back in. I'm getting a little slow, getting a little slow, getting very slow. But again, it doesn't take much to knock the power out of this thing. So it's a three-point land. This aircraft is pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is we're going to hold the nose up just a little bit. Then we're going to smoothly reduce the throttle by bringing the nose up. 
The goal here is to land on all three tires at the same time. See, we landed mostly on the front tire. We needed to be at about a seven and what is this? Um, this is almost a 15 degree angle based on our indicator. So we could have landed a little bit less flat there, but you can see that parked us down on the runway quite nicely. Again, it's gonna take a couple of times and I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert on this aircraft. Other than the fact it landed in about the distance of that first marker. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and I'll park this thing and not too, too far away. So I'll go ahead and I'll pop the flaps down and take myself right over to the parking spot. <laughs> Whoa, oh, oh no! <laughs> and that is why you never want to disengage your flaps when you're at low altitude. But what we'll do is we'll go zip over there and you know, take a short hop rather than uh, you know, taking the taxiway kind of a thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take ourselves right over to those hangars again. I might as well treat this thing like a helicopter because it essentially can be. Even those flaps all the way down. That looks like a pretty safe spot to land right there. You know, I think it'd be even easier just to go ahead and land this thing right in the mouth of that uh, giant hangar bay right there. Got a bit of a crosswind to contend with. Go ahead and pull the throttle back. We're going to pull that nose up nice and high, nice and high. There's the angle right there for the three-point landing. And we'll go ahead and hit the brakes and taxi yourselves right into that building. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, the key elements is that just remember your cruise power is going to be about 5,000 RPM or less on this thing. Yeah, on a good day, you might be able to get about 85 knots out of it, but in generally, it's a pretty good slow, pretty good cruising aircraft. Enjoy.